The world's largest lake by surface area is in our backyard, and this Sunday is the annual Lake Superior Day celebration. Superior holds 10% of the world's fresh surface water, so the health of the big lake is important to all of us. So how are warming temperatures impacting Lake Superior? Here with some answers are Robert, Dr. Robert Sterner, director of UMD's Large Lakes Observatory, and Dr. Jay Austin is professor of physics and astronomy with the observatory, and welcome. Thanks for being here. We, we love our lake. We're happy that someone's observing it. Yes. <laughs> uh, for, Bob, for those who may not be familiar with the Large Lakes Observatory, maybe we could just start by uh, giving us a, a little primer on what it is and, and the mission. Sure. Uh, always happy to do something like that. Uh, Large Lakes Observatory has been around for a little over 25 years now. It's a part of UMD. Uh, it's a research unit within UMD's uh, uh, campus, and it has a unique mission. It has a mission to study scientifically the large lakes of Earth. And so I usually say Lake Superior is special because it's right in our backyard. Um, and we certainly have a lot of work going on in Lake Superior and the other Great Lakes. But over the years, LLO has done research projects re literally all over the world. A lot of work in Africa, Asia, Central South America. And so um, our focus is on big bodies of water, which is a globally significant mm -hmm. reservoir of uh, of water for all of humanity. Dr. Austin, this has been an unusually warm year. What kind of temperature is Lake Superior right now and what effect does all this warm weather have on the big lake? Um, temperature varies dramatically over the surface of the lake. So right now the lake is pretty swimmable in coastal regions. We were just um, offshore on Lake Superior about 50 miles south of Grand Marais earlier this week um, and it's in the 50s out there and so a little cooler. Um, it is a little bit above normal right now um, within um, historical standards, mm -hmm. um, but we had, a, what we, the lake has seasons essentially, and the summer season um, where it starts to warm rapidly was about two weeks earlier than it normally would be. And so that leads to the warm temperatures we're seeing right now, in addition to the fact that it's just very warm right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about uh, the longer term climate change? Are you seeing impacts? Um, on the lake with climate change, you know, either in the water temperatures or in the biology mm -hmm. of, of the lake? And, and maybe both of you could answer that. Well, so start so I'll, I'll start with yeah. that, yeah. And so um, a colleague of mine and I several years ago published a paper looking at um, warming trends in Lake Superior and the Great Lakes in general. And what we're seeing, at least as of the publication date of 2007, wow, it's been a while, um, the lake at that stage was on the order of three to four degrees warmer in the summer than it was just in 1980. So mm -hmm. a relatively quick warming of surface summer water temperatures. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that we're losing ice uh, in the winter and that ice cover sort of preconditions the lake for, um, for the summer and, and pushes that start of the summer earlier and results in, in warmer summer water temperatures. Mm -hmm. And then what does that do to, to the plants and animals that yeah. call our Great Lakes home? That's a question we've been trying to answer for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very difficult question. Uh, one answer to that is temperature affects almost everything in biology and chemistry. So if the lake is warming, as Jay just described, something has to be happening. But documenting exactly what that is is, is really quite tricky. Uh, one, one clear signal that has just emerged in the last couple of years is um, the, the new occurrence, we believe new occurrence of algal blooms, which ha are happening in the South Shore of Lake Superior between the Twin Ports and the Apostle Islands. Um, our analysis through data going back, some of Jay's data and some others, um, indicate that these blooms happen in warm years. And so Lake Superior has warm years and still a few. Mm -hmm. They're sure. rarer, but uh, cooler or cold years. Uh, these blooms happen in warm years, and particularly they happen in years of really significant rainfall. So the biggest bloom years were 2012, which is the famous year of the huge Duluth right. rainstorm. Mm -hmm. 2018 actually was also a very significant rainstorm, though it wasn't centered right on Duluth. It was over in uh, uh, northern Wisconsin. A lot of water came into Lake Superior along the shoreline and then into the Keweenaw. So um, those years that were both warm and were really significant rainfall, those were the years so far when we've seen the most intense blooms. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Sterner, what then is the overall health of Lake Superior? Um, I mean, you have to say compared to 
uh, the, most of the uh, region of the lower Great Lakes compared to many other uh, large lakes on Earth. Lake Superior is in pretty good shape. It is. Um, people use the word pristine. Um, that's a little bit like saying you're healthy. <laughs> you know, it's like, things are pretty good in most respects, but I have a little cramp here. Um, <laughs> So, uh, I mean, we should be proud of Lake Superior. A, a really fascinating dimension of Lake Superior to me is the lake has a self-sustaining top predator. All over Earth, we've lost our top predators. Uh, name another place where the natural top predator is still there, still thriving, still self-reproducing. That's the lake trout. And so right here in our backyards, right here in the middle of North America, we have one out of 10 raindrops on the planet mm. right here in our lake mm. in a relatively pristine state. We need to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. We're going to be, uh, we mentioned that we're going to be celebrating Lake Superior Day, or now it's kind of expanded into a number of days, I, I yeah. understand. Why is it important to take some designated time and really focus on the lake and what it means? Uh, I'll throw that to you, Jay. Um, I think that anything we can do to raise awareness is important. Um, it's sometimes easy, even though we have this fantastic resource here, to assume that because it's so large that it's invulnerable. Uh, whereas, in fact, um, Lake Superior, uh, I'll, I'll take this from a, a climate change perspective, as I'm wont to do, um, was recently a co-author on a large collaborative paper where we looked at several hundred lakes around the world, and Lake Superior is among the fastest warming lakes in the world. Mm -hmm. And so just because it's large doesn't mean um, it isn't vulnerable to those sorts of changes. All right, well, Dr. Jay Austin, Dr. Bob Sterner, thank you so much for coming in and good luck with your research and uh, protecting the Great Lakes. Thank Thanks for, for having us. us. Thank you.